Hi guys and welcome back to the world of 28mm. I'm Adam and first of all let me just say welcome and thank you to all my new subscribers that have joined me since the last episode, so thank you very much. Uh, in this episode we're going to be taking a look at a game I've been playing uh, called Outlands and if you stick around to the end there'll be a special little surprise just for you guys. Alright, so let's head down to the table and we'll have a look. Okay, so here it is, Outlands. So let's just take a quick flick through the book and see the different rules in here. Okay, so we've got intros, contents... Um, okay, disclaimer, <laughs> I keep forgetting it about this book. I do try and keep my um, my channel as fam family friendly as possible. There are a few rude words in this. Um, I personally don't mind, but um, I'm just warning you guys. Okay, so we've got a bit of lore to start off with here. So we've got the Fall of Paradise. Now these are, as, as with most rule books, you'll find bits and bobs of the background lore, the fluff or whatever you want to call it, um, put throughout the, uh, throughout the rule book. So uh, next up we've got what's needed to play. So five painted or unpainted models. Got to be painted, <laughs> personally. Uh, a handful of D6, tape measure, character sheets, uh, card and pencil, tokens, as a caveat they're in this book so you don't have to buy any more tokens, you can just scan them from this or cut them out, it's up to you. Um, and willpower tokens, once again they don't have to be tokens, uh, you can use a d6 if you like, just something to keep track of how many you have. And then on to and just the last couple, um, a few more different coloured dice, uh, some will be for initiative and two would be for um, turn dice so I get my words out but just make sure they're a different colour so you can you know which dice are used to keep track of which stat uh, so we've got some more background stuff there data info file one so the models now the thing I like about this game is that you can use any models you like um, and so rather than being a 28 millimeter game or a um, 32 millimeter game or a 15 millimeter game or whatever it works on the premise of occupied space and this is, this is how they get around the whole using different size miniatures um, so it says here the considered rule for line of sight is that miniature occupies a space the width of its base and a height of one and a half inches larger models would occupy a space the width of the base and height equal to the width of the base plus half an inch so those that's how you get around um, uh, using different size models, so all the information you need is in, in that part there. Oh, and, and on this here as well. So we've got character sheets next. So basically, in this game, um, you can uh, level up your gangs as you play. So or, or in between games. So once uh, once you finish one game, you can then take that experience. Um, and level up your characters which could then possibly mean that they could carry different weapons and things like that um, so that's all of your stuff for your character sheet there uh, your measurements so everything's done in inches your line of sight uh, which we all know is is, is, um, is is basic rule and then we've got some more data info uh, movement and speed so that gives you all well, self-explanatory that's all your um, all your movement rules how it's uh, measured in this case in inches and things like that a bit more law okay and then we're going to go into actions so essentially every turn when when it's your go um, all of your models have, have a certain amount of actions uh, which could could possibly lead to, lead to reactions from the other player but this will give you all the rules to learn how your, act, how your models act and react that's it, get more words out also you've, you've also got rules for the heroic actions and special actions We've got our free actions list here, so that's free stuff that you can do. Someone shoots at you, you might be able to dive behind cover. Uh, normal actions, which will cost you, uh, well, 
depending on what it is you want to do, will cost you a certain amount of action dice or reaction dice. So there we've got uh, move, ranged attack, close combat, pause and pick up. We've got your heroic actions. So these can be some like, you know, like quite ninjury moves. So you've got, uh, so you can climb up, uh, duck and dive, shoot on the move. So you can shoot while you're running for more cover. <laughs> Hit and run, running past the hostile model and giving it a good solid slap in the face. <laughs> uh, attacking jump, charge, sneak, sprint, and distracting shot. So those are some of your heroic actions. And then you've got your heroic action tests. So what, what roles we need to make to pull off those heroic actions. Uh, doo -doo. Right, so got, so these are all heroic actions, shoot the move, hit and run. And all of these, all of these black boxes that you see here, they'll give you everything you need to know about how to... Uh, what. So it's got your action, in this case it's charge. We've got your cost. Oh, let's keep that in the light. Got your cost, which is one action uh, or reaction, uh, and then what happens if it's successful? Underneath that is what happens if it's unsuccessful, and then any extra notes that you might need to know, special rules wise. Uh, so let's go through, and then we've got our reactions here, and we'll get to the actions and reactions in a bit, it's a little bit later on in the rule book, but I'll explain that shortly. And then we've got our willpower section. So this is explain your willpower, um, how many you have for each game, how you can use them. Uh, they're basically for helping you get pluses to your um, rolls, so you see hit rolls or wound rolls and things like that. Uh, ranged attacks. So it explains that you've got to make your roll to hit any modifiers that you might need to know for cover or whether you've moved and things like that. Uh, cover, so this is explain how cover works in this game and you've got some nice um, pictures just to help you out. I always find they're quite helpful. I'm a bit more visual than I am reading them. Uh, your close combat rules. Once again with some nice little uh, pictures to help you along your way. And then you've got your damage and armor saves down here. Uh, so what have we got next? We've got creating a warband. So this will give you, and uh, it says here, before you can conquer the Outlands, you will need to assemble a gang of spice hunters. All starting gangs require at least five models. The first five are free to recruit. Uh, you can, of course, recruit extra models, but they will cost you X credits each. And this will occur at the end of, in the end phase. Sorry. Um, so that will tell you how to create your warband. And then we've got um, our basic weapons. So these are all just real basics to start off with as um, as we'll find out in a bit. You can customize weapons um, and things like that. So there's some weapon char characteristics there. Uh, you reload, your range, reach, damage, impact, blast, burst, drag, knock down or rate of fire. Environ de if, blah, environmental damage, excuse me, I get my words out. So that basically means things like um, you can be knocked off a ledge if you've got a sni if you've got a sniper up on a rooftop somewhere or something like that, someone sneaks up behind him with a shotgun, he might well, might well end up falling off the building and therefore injuring himself or taking himself out of the game. Uh, so you've got environmental damage. Uh, your ranged weapons, so there's a, I've got a whole list of them there, all the, all the basic um, ranged weapons. We've got your close combat weapons there. Getting up close and personal with the enemy is a messy business. It can be. Uh, all of basic uh, close combat weapons there. And we've got outlines of the game. So, this is where it's going to give you um, the outlines of the actual game. So it says here, at the heart of Outlands is the Reaction Intelligence Skirmish Engine, or RISE for short. The RISE game system allows for both players to take part in the same game turn. Now, this is brilliant because you know it, it keeps the fluency of the game going, there's no 
your it's not a your go my go your go my go um most of the time and i say most of the not all of the time but most of the time you will both have a chance to either act or react so it just keeps it rolling uh where was i one player will be the active player who generates action dice and the dreaded potential reaction dice note the word potential it's not guaranteed and the other player will be the reactive player how and when action or reaction dice are generated is explained later in the rules but it is wise to remember that both players will be able to move, attack or make actions in each game turn. Oh, there you go. He's repeated my, senten uh, my sentiment there. He says, none of this I go, you go nonsense. Because <laughs> it can take away from the, the, the fluency of the game. Uh, so we've got here, uh, follow the, uh, on this page here, follow these steps to set up and play your first game of Outlands. Uh, so setting, senior in terrain, spice crystals, um, as a disclaimer, uh, spice crystals is, is what you fight over. So Outlands is, um, well, it's post-apocalyptic essentially. So everyone's fighting over these spice crystals. They're like the main currency. You can trade stuff, you can make stuff, you can do all sorts of with it. So uh, the spice crystals... Model deployment, willpower, team rating, turn counters, and initiative. So that's all in this bit here. So settings, as you can see, they've given you a few um, basic outlines of places you could fight, uh, where you could set up a table. So you've got a township, uh, we've got the Badlands, and then we've got shanty towns. So they've given you a few examples there. But the great thing, thing with this game is that you don't have to buy into anything. Any terrain that you've got, um, will do you can you know even this is supposed to be sort of a, a kind of a post-apocalyptic you know so it should all be barren wastelands and things like that um, it's entirely subjective I, I've used test upon a terrain before so this gives you a few ideas of settings so if you wanted to make a board say a town board for the township um, bit then brilliant uh, what else have we got so we've got the scenery and the terrain uh, so that will give you any rules for climbing and, and things like that. And we've got the Spice Crystals. And this is one of the most important parts of the game because this is essentially um, your currency. So I'll read a, a couple of bits out. So once the scenery pieces have been set on the game table and both players have agreed to watch piece of terrain is classed as either scatter or solid, it's time to generate the amount of Spice Crystals and deploy the Spice onto the game table. Spice Crystals are on 25mm or... Uh, circle or 20 millimeter square bases. Spice crystals do not block line of sight or offer any cover. So yeah, that gives you all your rules for laying out your spice crystals and what they are useful. But like I say, they're they're essentially um, not only can you win the game with them, but you can also use them to um, upgrade your weapons and things like that. Uh, model deployment. And then your stock of willpower, like I say, you, you can use those willpower to um, modify any rolls, or not any rolls, but some rolls, uh, so use a hit to wound and things like that. Uh, we've got underdogs, which is, um, so if, um, if two players are playing, one player is experienced and has a leveled up gang, and the other person has literally just started, like this is his first game, then we can use the underdog rules to balance things out so it's not going to be a complete defeat for the new player. Uh, game turn counter, so every game of Outlands lasts for 10 game turns and after the 10th game turn has been played the game mash mashin? mission <laughs> or battle is finished. Uh, you've got your rules for your initiative dice, uh, rules for active players, I think and then we've got the reactive rules. So as I was saying earlier, you've got a certain dice pool. Uh, any rolls over a certain, let's just say, for example, a 4 plus, um, you get your action. Uh, uh, but you also risk the other player having a reaction. And then we've got ending the game. So a big bonus to this, um, as you know, I'm a massive 
fan of Mordheim and one of my biggest things about Mordheim is having that um, the ability to level up your gangs in between battles and you know depending on how, how well the battle went you might be able to level up your gang some more give them some more weapons or make them a bit harder or something like that so you can do that in this game you will always have your basic um, gang to start off with and then after each one you'll you might be able to depending on how well the battle went you might be able to upgrade some of your um, some of your gang members so you've got the loot pool uh, injuries which is obviously for afterwards um, the permanent injury table um, how you level up your character there um, infusion which uh, <laughs> is quite a groovy concept I love this so all traders in the Outlands know, knows a lab rat, a gifted individual with some working knowledge of spice crystals and their ability to add some extra effects or conditions to weapons. Infusion is always a gamble and costly too. Sometimes the result is good and sometimes, well, not so. During this stage of the end phase you can pay to have weapons or armour infused with magical, but somewhat dangerous, spice. It is important to remember that some conditions or effects cannot be stacked and sometimes you may end up with a useless weapon. Each time you attempt to infuse a weapon you must pay 200 credits and 2 spice crystals. It's an expensive and risky business that can result in no change to the weapon profile or destroy the weapon. Um, you pays your money, you takes the risk. Is the quote in here? So you can infuse your weapons with with the spice, and yes, it's risky. You might end up with nothing, but you might end up with some monstrous weapon that people will fear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your weapon infusion table. Um, the weapon infusion table, if it goes wrong, and then you've got your armor infusion. So you can do the same with your armor. Combat drugs. Um, essentially you can up some of your stats I believe uh, combat drugs are a consumable item once used it's gone uh, you have to play the lab rat to knock up a new batch but unlike weapon and armor infusions you can do this as many times as you wish providing you have the credits and spice to do, to do, to do so um, each combat drug costs 100 credits and one spice crystal Combat drugs last until the end of the mission or 10 game turns have been played. Um, so use them, and it's saying up here to use them, it costs an action or a reaction dice to use. And then you've got the table down here for the combat drugs. So you could potentially have, uh, say, plus two speed or um, plus one to hit. And things like so, you know, some, they can be great. Um, abilities and special actions. And then I believe... It's... Oh, we've got some skills here. So you've got things like dual wheel pistols, dual wheeled SMGs. Um, they've all got their credits, how much they cost, uh, what it is that they do. The description, requirements, a minimum level, and any extra notes or special rules that you might have to take into account. So we've got a few pages of those. Oh, more than I thought. Uh, right, okay, so that's the skin. And then we've got the equipment. Consumable items, so we've got their common, common underbody suit, um, advanced underbody suit, infrared goggles, ear mufflers, divers boots. All of these offers, like I say, have bonuses um, that can help you out through the game. Miscellaneous items. I'm not going to read one of those. <laughs> it's because this channel is family friendly. <laughs> uh, then we've got weapon attachments, silencer, uh, silencer, sniper scope, grenade launchers, rules for grenades. We've got to have a good grenade. A good grenade? Some good grenades. Uh, each all different types of grenades that you can get flashbangs, smokes, 
um, impact grenades, blast grenades, uh, proximity mines there, so the rules for those, how much they cost each. And that's it for rules wise, so then we get to the back of the book, they've provided you with um, some character sheets, so you can uh, print that out, scan it, print it out, and uh, yeah, write on it as you will. Um, as a little caveat actually, before we move on, when me and John played, um, what he did is he had he had one of these character sheets, but he put it in those like acetate covers, um, like the plastic sleeves that you find, um, I've used them before uh, when I was doing my university work, just like the, the plastic sleeves, and basically he uses a dry white marker and then so it's um, and he draws directly onto the the plastic sleeve so he doesn't actually mark any of the things it's a good idea and then we've got some a storage locker so any any bits that you've stashed away after a game this is where you can list it out or you can print this out again and have a different copy have a separate copy and then lastly we've got all our tokens uh, so we can once again we can print these out mount them on some card or whatever and Basically, it means you don't have to buy out. So, that's the rule book. Let's head back up to the uh, outro, and I'll see you in a sec. And there you go, guys. That's Outlands, the miniature game. So, what are the pros for me? Uh, first of all, it's not a game that you have to buy into. So, you don't have to buy a core set. You don't have to keep buying units and extra bits and bobs here and there. All you've got is your initial cost of the Outlands rulebook, everything else you will already have. Um, all your dice, you know, um, tokens are in the rulebook as we saw. So, you know, you don't have to buy into anything. Um, you can use any miniatures you want, within reason. Obviously, we can't be using, like, busts and things like that. But um, any miniatures you want. So if you're a, 28, a true 28mm player, then they'll be brilliant. If you're a Games Workshop player who deals slightly bigger miniatures, um, they're also fine to use, so there's no extra expenditure there. And the same when it comes to terrain. Um, you don't have to go out and buy any specific terrain. Um, they give you a few outlines, as you, we saw in the rule book, of you know, uh, areas that you could play, but essentially you could play in any kind of surrounding you want. Uh, when me and John played last, uh, we ended up using my scenery from Test of Honor, so uh, it went from being a sort of outlands back uh, to, uh, well, to a samurai village, <laughs> and it worked fine. Um, the rise uh, rules in this, um, so the action and reaction system, uh, it stops the game from going stale. It keeps the um, keeps the momentum going. So it's not a you go, I go, you go, I go game. You both get to well, most of the time, you both get to go on the same turn. So as I make a reaction, you could, if I've got, if you've got the right dice make a reaction, so it keeps the game flow going. Um, I found when I played with John, um, I did find myself the rules were really easy to pick up, um, the basic ones. Uh, I found by the third turn, you know, I was quite comfortable, I didn't have to keep looking at the rule book or keep saying to John, oh, how do I do this or how do I do that, um, which ultimately keeps the, the momentum of the game going. Um, a specific love of mine because I'm a big fan of Mordheim, is that in between games you get to level up your gang. So you can give them new weapons, you can give them new um, actions or things like that, you know, so everyone's gang can be unique to them. Uh, on the note of uniqueness as well, um, within that sort of levelling up system as we saw, you can make your own weapons. Um, once again, making your gang unique to you and how you want to use them. And lastly, the updates. So, uh, John and Ross, they um, uh, release updates for the game every once in a while for free. Okay, please note that for free. Um, on the Outlands Facebook group, which is will be in the description below. Um, go and check that out. Well, you, you'll have to in a minute, if, say, and you'll see why. But basically, um, yeah, they release all of the updates, any patches, things like that. It all goes onto the Facebook group first, and it they're free, so you can just download them or use that piece of armor or weapon that they're giving away that week or that month or whatever. 
Okay, so that's all my pros for it really. So how can you get your hands on a copy of this? Well, I have been speaking to um, the creators of this game, John and Ross, and they have agreed to give away a hardcover copy of this game to one of you guys. Um, in order to, do, to win this, all you need to do is follow the link in the description to the below to the Facebook group, where uh, if you if you join that, first of all, and then once you're accepted, what we'd like you to do is to leave us. Uh, the, the, you'll find a pinned post in there. I think he's going to put it up tonight. If it's not, give it a chance. It, it won't be up. I've told him to put a pinned post up, but you'll find a pinned post in the Facebook group. Um, in that pinned post, if you leave a description of what miniatures you'll use, along with a little, just a sentence or two of a context of a, or, or a backstory for the gang. So just to give you an example, my gang that I've made is a pirate themed gang, which I found some brilliant miniatures on from Black Scorpion. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sea of Thieves, the Xbox game. and. Uh, Essentially, I've based my gang around those. So they were sailing the high seas, doing some piratey stuff, and they got lost in the shroud of the fog. And then the next thing you knew, they were on dry land in the middle of the desert, and now they've got to fight for survival. Okay, so just a couple of little sentences. So, links in the description below. Follow that link, join the group, and give us an example of the miniatures you'll use, photos as well if you like, but it's not compulsory, and a little sentence of a background slash context for your gang. All right? So, that's it for this week. Like it if you've liked it, share if you think anyone else would like to see it, and don't forget to subscribe for the next week's episode. Have fun, guys.